I'm popular on campus for many different reasons, not the least of which is the width and breadth of information of which I am in possession that extends beyond the classroom and the curriculum required by the pedagogy that is in place here at the Institution of Higher Learning where I work. I had a conversation with a student in student government this morning, <coughs> a man I first met because uh, he worked at the desk in the gymnasium, who turned out to be a physical science major, but who is someone who I have never had in the class. We started talking today about some scientists, about the rest of the story. I told him, since he's a physics major and not a chemistry major, that I talked in the video that I made during quarantine about Le Chatelier's principle about the Haber process. Now, everyone knows about Haber, who knows anything about chemistry. It's the ammonia refrigeration system that uh, was pioneered by Haber. <coughs> Sorry, I had an apple. It's not agreeing with me. But what they don't know about Haber is Haber's history. And I shared his history with someone else. I'll leave it to you to look up because it's not relevant to this video. Then I mentioned some things about Einstein that uh, this student didn't know. Um, we'll call him Mr. Barn. And uh, Mr. Barn told me he did not realize that Einstein had had some illegitimate children. I said, I learned a few years ago that Einstein's uh, findings correlated very closely with the birth of his children. We also talked about James Watson of Watson and Crick, about the rest of the story. If you have never read The Double Helix by James F. Watson, you should read it because it will augment whatever you have heard about him, Rosalind Franklin, and the Nobel Prize. The basic premise of this is that as I tell students at the beginning of every semester, but without these specific examples, that, I, that scientists are men. People forget that scientists are for sale. Scientists are paid, that the money sometimes is suspicious, and sometimes so are the conclusions. And I told him, as I've been telling people since this began, I do not trust the science because I know the scientists. For all the hate that James F. Watson gets for his role in the double helix, he does deserve some criticism. There's an adjunct professor here, one of our oldest adjuncts, who works uh, in biology, who told me about his experiences rotating through Professor Watson's lab, Dr. Watson. I like Dr. Watson. <laughs> we'll call him Dr. Watson. Through Dr. Watson's lab, when uh, this particular adjunct was going to graduate school himself. And he told me one day about how Dr. Watson was an ex especially atrocious horn dog where the 60-year-old professor was pursuing 20-year-old students for, um, shall we say, in flagrante delicto activities and the like. And so if there is something to hate about him, it is that. Sometimes we think about only the thing we know about a scientist. We think about Le Chatelier for his work in equilibrium. We think about Haber for his work on um, ammonium refrigeration. We think about Einstein for his theories of relativity. We think about all scientists without regard for the rest of their lives. In fact, if you think about it, most scientists are known for only one or two things. And sometimes the things for which they are known are the only thing in their life that is worthy. Go look up Haber, because most of his life, he was an odious man. And many of these people were odious. But the good lives after them, and the evil is interred with their bones. So I told this. I told Mr. Barn. I said I don't trust the scientists because I know the scientists. And I may have said this elsewhere. I know I say it to every class, every semester when I teach. When I was in graduate school, in the beginning of digital imagery being accepted in the scientific community, I kept generating this image on a DNA southern blot, which is now a sort of archaic technique. On this southern blot, as we would capture the image, there was always something in the corner right up here that I couldn't identify. I didn't know where it came from, and I couldn't figure out what it was or how to eliminate it. And my boss said, when you publish it, just smudge it out. And to my everlasting shame, I did exactly that. I know because I did this, not with any attempt at obfuscation or to deceive or, or defraud anyone, that I did this so I can only imagine how many other people make innocuous decisions to exclude outliers, to omit information, or to jump to conclusions about things that they find, perhaps only once, that they were never able to repeat. I don't trust the science because I don't trust the scientists. I don't trust the science because I don't like most of the scientists. Let's go back to James F. Watson. 
James F. Watson is accused by many of uh, stealing information from Rosalind Franklin that he used to win the Nobel Prize. And whether that's true or not is not the relevant thing. The, the relevant part of the story is she was never going to get the Nobel Prize anyway because you have to be alive. And at the time that Watson and Crick were awarded the Nobel Prize, Rosalind Franklin was dead from exposure to x-rays, which is what she did all day long, and which is how she got the image that Watson eventually used. For those of you who hate Watson, he is also an odious man. Go look up what happened to him shortly before his death, where he was stricken from the role and his Nobel Prize was taken from him. <laughs> These are not necessarily great men, just because they made great strides in our understanding of the world around us. They are men of insight. Um... Nikola Tesla is lauded by many students who, do, who are always shocked to discover that he was in love with and wrote love poems to a pigeon. These are not good men. They are not whole men. They are not well men. In fact, some of the most brilliant minds that have ever lived are also the most disturbed. So the next time someone tells you to trust the science, remember that science is done by ordinary people. People who go through specific training, people who have degrees, people who took classes, people who've been observed, who are hopefully double-checked, verified, and vetted, but not necessarily. But in the end, they're people. They get up in the morning, they eat breakfast, they get dressed, sometimes not very well. They come to work and sometimes don't do a very good job. But every now and then they have a flash of brilliance, whether it's concomitant with the birth of a child, legitimate or not, or because they spend all day away from other people, devoid of the normal social graces that make a civil society, and then we remember them for the one good thing that they did, because it was a great thing, and because without them we might not understand. Many of the scientists that came to the United States with Einstein were absolutely uh, outraged that having taken from the Germans the ability to build a, a nuclear or, I guess, atomic weapon at the time, the United States took that information and built one of our own. That was not the reason that they came here. They came here because they knew that the Germans would use it, and they were hoping that we would be wiser than they. And I hope that Americans will be wiser and learn that the scientists, people forget that scientists are people, that we are humans. We have the same frailties, the same needs, the same desires. We get hungry, we get horny, we get hangry, we have emotions, we have moods, we go through phases of life, and we grow from being naive and smudging out images to looking at people and saying, this looks like something was smudged out and I don't trust you because you've deceived me before. We look at papers and go, that doesn't make sense. Did anyone vet this? Did anyone double check it? Or are we taking it on faith because it's the answer that we want? I also tell students, most scientists are not interested in the truth. They are secretly hoping that the truth will corroborate what they already happen to believe. And that, my friends, is the problem. I don't trust the science because I know the scientists. I am one of them. Be wise, do your own homework, look into things for yourself, and don't trust someone because they put on a lab coat, have a title, and call themselves doctor. Because why does Earth need so many doctors? Godspeed, good luck, and uh, may you learn to be wiser than I.